welcome to the 2022 United States Women's Disc Golf Championships here in Madison, Wisconsin. This PDGA major uh, already an exciting week, and this is just day number one. It's Grant Zellner alongside, for the first time ever, Sai Ananda. Thank you so much, Grant. I'm stoked to be here. You got a chance to play this course, of course, <laughs> and this is a really, really interesting and frankly, a really fun layout. Not a lot of length to it, but a little bit of technicality as we venture through the woods here at Token Creek. Yeah, and it's always interesting with courses like this to have that little bit of a birdie race going on. Mm -hmm. A really good icebreaker of a course for this major championship. Starting here on hole number one, 333, uh, 330 feet, a par three. I'll get those threes out eventually. Going round the right side for most of the players because of this great big tree in the middle of the fairway and the wind was up. Yes, it was. Um, we had at least 25 mile an hour winds and gusts, so it made it very challenging. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that our card today is legendary with Des Redding on the box. Absolutely. And it's always a pleasure to play with her. Not really a bad line out of the hand there. With this win, though, you got the disc just a little bit slammed. That's not an out-of-bounds area or anything. No, but she made a smart call, keeping it low and, and keeping the angle a little bit tighter. Miss Julianna Carver! Another legend of the game, Juliana Corver on the box. And you can see the effect of the wind right there. Yep, looks like she fell a little bit victim to that headwind. Our third competitor in the field for FPO, Miss Rebecca Cox. Rebecca Cox has been playing really well thus far in 2022. Has found herself on several lead cards here throughout the course of the year. Yeah, it's really awesome to see. I know she's been putting in a lot of work in her game, and you can definitely see it showing. A little high out of the hand, but the wind direction not going to hurt her too much for anything other than distance, of course. Yeah, you've got a good bailout zone for the right hand, backhand hyzer. Our final competitor for our 236 tee time. And Aria Costruida here on the box. Latitude Teamster. <laughs> kind of following Juliana's line there and getting a pretty similar result to Juliana's. This was a really tricky win, not so much the velocity, but the direction. I would agree, especially with how it aligns with the uh, with where the hole plays. It makes it very challenging to throw that, that backhand hyzer accurately. That's Juliana from 165, perfectly placed. She'll have an easy drop in par. And, and here's Aria. Just inside the circle, about 30 feet. That'll be a tester to start her round. Des Redding up. Oh, that was very unfortunate from underneath there. You definitely want to get your approach from that, that spot. That's the one place in the fairway you don't want to be. Becca was just over 100 feet for this upshot. Places herself in pretty close. With the gusty wind, that might still be a little bit of a tester, but we'll go back to Des right now. Mm, that was a good run. She had a nice level on that one. So Des will take the bogey here on the first hole. Aria now to save par. Mm, challenging. Really tough headwind for her. That angle was the angle you probably didn't want. Mm -hmm. 
but luckily there are a lot of uh, a lot of birdies out there on the course so even starting with a you know a bogey or a five is not going to break your round out here today our players now shaking the jitters off getting through hole number one here of this four round championship so 71 holes yet to be played en route to this national women's championship another pdga major by the way I don't know if I'd mentioned that before, but I feel like that's something I'm supposed to say as often as I can during the, mm -hmm. <laughs> during the course of this video as we watch Rebecca Cox here. That focus. And stylish shirt matches the putter. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that was planned. Hole number two, our first par four of the round, 530 feet this tall tree here in the center of the fairway, we're about to zoom right on by about 350 feet from the tee pad. And as you can see, still a ways to go. Pretty much dead straight though, to this basket area. A Little bit concealed behind that little bushy tree there. A challenging enough par four, especially this early in the round. I agree, especially with, like you said, that bush right next to the basket. There's Juliana playing downwind now. Excellently placed shot. That's what you want for the second shot. Tempting maybe to try to bite off too much here when the hole doesn't demand that from you. Here's nope. Rebecca. I think she's going to like that one. I think this is a very birdieable par four, especially early in the round. Does Redding just a little bit low out of the hand, but on this particular challenge, not going to be a problem. She'll be able to approach the basket from there. And now Aria. Very nice. I actually landed in a similar area, and it's actually a very open hyzer line from there. Yeah, not out of bounds. Tall grass, sure, but not out of bounds there to the left. Very little out of bounds, really, on the entire Tolkien Creek course. And when there was out of bounds, it, it kind of made sense. Obvi areas that were in between fairways that you obviously didn't want to go near. Oh, let's hope this one gets back over. Des from 260, that's a friendly tree. Knocks mm -hmm. her to just the edge of circle one. Here's Aria, as you said, a situation that probably looks worse than it is. A little bit long, but she executed that very well. I like the height of that shot coming into the area around the basket. Mm -hmm. You can't ace it unless you got the right height. Yeah, and it was interesting. She chose the inside line. I opted for a, a more, more of the line like this. Juliana into about 40 feet off to the side there. She'll have an awkward stance. Rebecca, just 190 to the basket. Yeah, if you can get a well-placed drive with a decent amount of distance, I feel like this is a very um, attainable three. So we'll have Juliana up first now. Again, from about 40 feet, forced to sort of deal with some weird footing mm. online yeah that tailwind slamming that disc down now des sort of crosswind here from 32 feet very nice i bet that one felt good to get in bring you back to square one is always mm -hmm. nice yep back to even rebecca here 22. Mm. Right on line, though. Got to keep going for him. Now Aria from about 20. Mm. Chains out. On the left. Only a par, though. Still, still making good headway on the round. Yep. We've got a clean scorecard here on hole number two. No bogeys. And we will move on here to hole number three. After a quick look 
at this birdie bid from Des Redding. Just an iconic style. Des right. is one of those players you can see from across the park and know instantly, oh, that's Des Redding over there. The, the, the tall silhouette and her style is just, just remarkable. Hole number three now, 275 feet, a par three. I remember when I first saw this particular hole, how much I liked it because it's pretty straightforward. But the placement of that first tree and now this second tree here on the right it gives you something to think about. Absolutely. It, you may think it's an easy birdie, but you really have to get the disc down a little bit further than you anticipated. At least I felt. Des trying to shape a wide sort of C-shaped Anheuser and does so to perfection. In the circle, very nice. Juliana, I expect her to follow a similar line here, or at least to try to. I like the look of this one. Even, it's a nice stop. Even catching the cabbage knocks the disc down perfectly pin high. Here's Rebecca. A little bit tighter on the line. Becca certainly with the power to get there with a lower line. No problem. Actually flies the basket. And Aria now. Hopefully this doesn't cut too far to the right. Nice. A little overturned. Got to the ground probably quicker than she wanted, but she'll have a circle's edge look. And we'll take a look at that right now. Still trying to dial in that putt today. I know the feeling though, right <laughs> on line, but just not quite up there. Got to keep going for him. Juliana, oh, a similar result. The, like, uh, like we mentioned before, these first three, four, maybe five holes, a little more wind exposed and the wind was up early in the round. You can see it there behind Rebecca as she puts nice. that one home. Des looking to go under par. It stays in. <laughs> Success. So Des, after an opening bogey, already back under par through three here at Token Creek. Everybody else cleans things up here at the third. Take a look at this birdie bid from Rebecca. Again, the focus. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Keeps the disc online throughout the entire putting form. I like that. Hole number four, 321 feet, par three. This hole is very interesting. I feel like you can really attack it from a multitude of different angles and none of them would be, you know, right or wrong. So this skinny little tree here on the left, right there, 270 from the tee pad gives you some idea of the range of all the rest of those trees in that little grove and then the basket beyond the grove back into the open we'll see how Des attacks this challenge mm, we also have that fence to the left playing as OB so hopefully that doesn't get too close mm -hmm. good point one of the few uh, significant OB lines here early in this round at Token Creek. Rebecca up next. Oh, I like this line. If it can get over. Pulled it maybe just a little bit, but not a bad result. Yeah, you could see the wind carried it a little bit straighter than I think she intended. Here's Juliana. Also an iconic form. You can recognize Juliana throwing a disc from across the park and Beautiful. that is fantastic I want to say that's probably what Rebecca was looking for at least that little skip through that gap there I like the flex line play too another really great shot at the basket that Beautiful. was a really comfortable throw from 
Arya. Didn't try to do too much. Let the disc do all of the work. Now Dez, about 100 feet out. Wind really snuffed that one, but mm -hmm. you can tell that should be an easy putt from there. Back up from 40. Mm, good run. Still on the line of the basket. They're going to go in one of these. Well, yeah, she's got the left-right down, just the up-down. Oh, oh, JK. Yep, Unforced she, error. She knows yeah. it. And now Dez to try to save this par. Nice. Kind of rode the wind in there. The wind behind her just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Gusting. That's an experienced player. Mm -hmm. Practically a drop in for Aria. And the only birdie on the card here at the fourth. And on a regular day with no wind, I feel like we would definitely have seen quite a lot of birdies. But the wind at such varying angles really made it challenging. Gives this course some teeth for sure. That extra bit of wind. Here in a minute, we'll be venturing a little deeper into the woods. And for a, a number of holes in a row, not too much of a factor, the wind. Um, here and there, perhaps, but not too much of a factor. But for now, our players facing the challenge here at Token Creek. I can't believe it. You're up next. Stay turning. Uh oh. Oh no. Ooh. Wow. Alan so that's, inbounds. That's exactly she, I mean, Unbelievable. Yes. The MVP Black Hole Pro is the best portable basket on the market. Out of the van, out of the case, and set up in under 60 seconds. The Black Hole Pro has a very easy setup and a very easy breakdown. It's perfect for any sort of practice putting, and I would recommend it for anyone who needs a portable basket. It's easy to transport, super versatile. It has a really good hit box, so it catches really well. I genuinely think it's the best portable basket on the market. The fifth at Token Creek measures 610 feet. This par four, sort of an interesting, it, it's, you can't call it a dog leg. It, it's a straight fairway that just has various sort of jogs to the left and right here and there with the way the different uh, fences and other things kind of cut off your route. So it's, a, it's an interesting challenge here for these players to negotiate all of that and give themselves a chance for the birdie. This hole also measures pretty long for these players at 610 feet, slightly uphill. And the placement is very, very challenging with that fence in play and how it leans to the right and then mm -hmm. the left. I think this is one of the more challenging par fours on the course. Aria, just around that bush, about 170 off the tee. As long as you clear that Excellent. with some height, you're going to be in about that landing area, which is pretty much what you want. Yeah, absolutely. And the only risk is that you may pull it a little bit too far to the right, kind of going for that optimal placement. Is opting to go just a little bit wider. Needs this to settle. Luckily, we had some really awesome spotters out there, mm -hmm. so that should be an easy find. Rebecca, a little bit more power on that shot. <laughs> Always good when you buzz the tower, buzz that cameraman, and into this little pocket of uh, open space there to the left. No out of bounds to speak of, but certainly challenging if you find yourself up against that fence or off in that rough to the left. Mm, I like that one. Nice and low as well. Kept it out of the wind. Perfectly shaped there for Juliana. There's Dez. Bit of an awkward angle here. Mm, nice. I threw from a very similar place, and it's challenging to get a shot to, as you can see, wrap the corner yeah, as much as you need to. A lot of angle from over there. Juliana now, because she played sort of down the right side, should have an open look. Threads that gap beautifully. Oh, very nice. 
That's what you want. That is a championship shot right there. Aria still with about 300 feet to go. I really like the placement on that shot. Just allows for a very straight up hyzer shot right down to the basket. A little bit downhill coming into the basket area, a fast green. Mm -hmm. So controlling your distance with a, with a hyzer is certainly an option that I would go to, given the opportunity. Such a challenging corner, mm -hmm. but she got it pretty far left as she could. Yeah, really not bad for where she was. Here's Des now. Still more than 100 from the basket. Mm. That's just another challenge on this hole. I mean, you have the, the tree on the off the tee. You have the fence that's in the middle of the fairway. And then even at the end of it, displaying great attitude, though. We're dealing with a lot here. is just sort of taking your medicine, chipping things up. And that fast green you can see, as you were mentioning before. Rebecca, about 55 to go. You gave it out all the life it needed. Really good opportunity there. JK in for the birdie after missing a couple of shorties early on in the round. That had to feel good. Des now hoping to clean things up. Always good to save a bogey like that. You never want to cause more damage no if you are gonna if you are gonna take strokes you know as make it as minimal as possible seems logical but somehow worth mentioning <laughs> absolutely i mean that is the the nature of disc golf it's not a matter of if you're going to take a stroke mm -hmm. at least exactly. in, in most cases it's keeping, a matter of when keeping a level head always important we see this gorgeous line off the tee from Juliana, just perfectly shaped, giving herself that easier angle for the upshot that resulted in a birdie. Jumping to hole number six now, 255 feet, this par three. Plays over the road and then steeply uphill. The road, by the way, inbounds. Basket, not only on the hillside, but also perched on this, this little sort of rock formation, this little plateau, causes Sort of an interesting situation with the way the discs come in in front of it. You can absolutely hit those rocks and roll back. Uh, yes, absolutely. I had that happen um, a couple of times during my practice rounds. Turn a 20-footer into a 45-footer. Mm -hmm. Are you? Wow. Excellent. Fantastic shot there. Up and over that overgrown area to the right. Just perfect. Here's Juliana. I think that should still finish well. Mm, oh no, she got I snagged think she there. She got snagged by a sort of a late branch mm -hmm. there and went straight down. We'll see what she's got left. Boy, it sure looked like she cleared it off the tee though. Here's Rebecca. I think that's one of the classic mistakes you'll see is maybe you know being a little bit overly cautious of that mm -hmm. bush and taking it a little bit wider than necessary. He'll have more than 40 feet straight uphill. Here is Des. Little low out of the hand, but... That's still an opportunity. Yeah, inside the circle, actually, from there. Juliana lucky to be that close to the edge where she can at least sort of straddle out. Still 90 feet to go here. Yeah, not the not the worst, but I think a, a par on this one will definitely make you kick the ground just a little bit. At 255, I think a lot of the players in this field are hoping to get the two on this one. Rebecca, just over 40 feet to go. That uphill makes it look a lot further than that. Mm-hmm. 
but you can see the whisker there at the edge of circle one, and she was no more than three paces or so beyond that whisker. Here's Des now, 30 feet. So close. Oh, come on. Wow, slow roll. That was the slowest roll. She's got almost double the distance now that she just had. Exactly. Get it. Mm, everybody was <laughs> cheering that on. Nothing like a little throw in. Oh, that would have been fantastic. But nevertheless, Des will take a second bogey in a row here at the sixth. At 250 feet, this hole definitely played very challenging. For what it was, no doubt about it. Aria, the lone birdie on the hole, surprisingly enough. Did Aria you, playing. Did you see Des take a quick look there at the rock that her, her first <laughs> shot skipped? That's like when you're walking down the street and you trip on a curb. And you turn around and look at the curb like, it was the, it. like it was the curb's fault that you tripped on the curb. I'm walking over here. <laughs> Jumping over to hole number seven now. A shorty at just 205 feet, but one of the tighter challenges that we've had so far here at Token Creek can see there the basket forces you to bend something a little bit back to the right unless you want to take the narrow gap on the right and now the basket perched on another one of these sort of rock ledge formations with a steep drop off beyond so players with a decision to make starting with aria And I definitely agree with the uh, decision to make, too. You can throw this um, left hand, backhand, right hand, backhand with an Anheuser, mm -hmm. forehand, straight down the gap. You really have to make the choice with what's comfortable with you. Juliana trying to take the left hand gap with an Anheuser throw. A little too steep on the angle catches that very first tree. Becca now. Lining up the forehand around the left side. Definitely the most obvious gap you can see. I like that she chose to throw a standstill as well. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Just a solid base. Wow. Takes everything deep. Not surprising at 205 feet, but still. Mm -mm. Especially with how it drops off like that. Even a throw could be six inches too long and it'll skip all the way down there. Des choosing the narrow gap on the right. I really like that line. Even though it's tighter, I, I found it to be the, is that, the easier is that route. What you went mm -hmm. for? Mm -hmm. So now Juliana with fairly stock up shot. And I just uh, on these short holes, I just can't help but think they're 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 sucking the their teeth at a par layup yeah, at two oh five, right. you know? You you feel the pressure of needing to get the birdie and it almost adds something to the hole. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. What a great putt with the drop off. From 25 feet, that's how you come back from back-to-back -back bogeys right there. Mm -hmm. Got Rebecca now. She went about 33, 34 feet long here. So coming back up the hill. Once again, perfectly online. That's mm -hmm. the first high miss I think we've seen on the day. So getting really close for Rebecca here to dialing everything in. And still smiles, which is really nice. Puts it in. Comebacker for par. Now here's Juliana cleaning up her par. That upshot ended up a little closer than I thought it did, not... An even better upshot than I thought. Here's Aria cleaning up her par. So, 205 feet, but just one for four on the birdie. You're mm -hmm. looking at it right here from Des. All serious. She knew it was mm -hmm. going in. Well, number eight now. A little deeper into the woods. 321 feet, a par three. In my notes, I have this as my favorite hole on the front nine. Mm. 
just really an interesting shape. The hole drops downhill right after the, the uh, tee pad more than you think it does and then plays very slowly and steadily uphill to this basket. So it's really a challenging sort of eye line for the players. You feel like if, if you throw too low, you're going to just burn things right into the ground, but too high, you've got the canopy to deal with. And it'll be interesting, that tree right in the center kind of either forces mm -hmm. you to play a flex shot with the right hand backhand or a more of a straight or a pop-up hyzer on the right side gap. Des makes the initial gap and now Aria up. Looks like everybody so far is opting for that flex line. You can see though, Aria, not a whole lot of space above that disc and yet needed a little more height to get all the way to the basket, just 321 feet away. So a, a bigger challenge than it looks like here. Oh, looks like she got ticked a little bit at the end there. Yeah, this this hole definitely demands that your your calculations are accurate. Almost like it takes 350 or 370 feet of power. Oh. Mm. Rebecca did catch that very first tree. Interesting to see how she'll get out of this one. You can see her line to the basket is basically non-existent. Oh, wow. What an excellent out. What a shot. That's exactly what you want when you Incredible. land on the rough off the tee like that. Here's Dez from 100 feet away. Oh, a good solid bid there. Mm-hmm. Juliana's about 80 feet out. No problem there. Stress-free par coming Juliana's way. Aria with a chance at carding the lone birdie again right at circle's edge this will be a tough putt oh. smooth line now with the comebacker no nice. problem that's not the first time so far in this round and it surely won't be the last that Arya confidently steps up and nails that comeback putt which is great it gives you more confidence on that first putt to run you know ever deeper shots i i absolutely agree having that that fearlessness with comebackers allows you to run putts and throws that are maybe further and further nice cleanup and this an all-world par from rebecca given where she was after that drive yeah, no pictures on the scorecard, but that was definitely exactly what you want if you ever end up errant off the fairway. That's where you want your second shot to be. Just impressive, that second shot. Aria, that little flick. That little her, bit of wrist motion. Uh -huh, to that putting stroke. Great for adding just a little bit of power. The last hole of this opening nine of this championship par three 282 feet very, tight on the right and the left yeah very challenging angles on this one with how far it really as you can see the camera is going and going and it's still further mm -hmm. to the right so it measures 282 feet but with that much bend you're forced to throw a much more powerful shot if you want the disc to fly all the way to the basket in the air here's des first to take on the challenge Maybe a little bit low, but that should still put her in position for a good layup. Yeah, out in the open. A little more than 100 feet out to the side there. Her left as she looks down from the tee pad. Here's Aria now. I like the height on this one. Yeah, that one's got enough height to get over toward the basket. Clips mm -hmm. a tree. Probably ends up with a fairly similar result, though. Mm hmm Yeah, those trees um, guard the basket very, very well at the end of your flight there. Juliana now 
a little low, a little tied out of the hand. That's kind of been her miss so far today. A little mm -hmm. low and a little bit a little bit pulled. We'll see if she can make the correction during the back nine as Rebecca steps up. Mm, another tight shot. Yep, but enough power to get around the corner. If you're trying to be aggressive, that, that tight wrap around the corner is definitely the line, but it also has a little bit more risk to it. Juliana had about 150 feet still to go. Shapes that upshot just perfectly. And here's Dez from about 110. Again, another excellent upshot from Dez. Stress-free par. And well-placed with the rock drop-off on the back. You definitely don't want to go too far. Rebecca now not really going for it from 55 feet. As you mentioned, the drop-off probably makes that a smart play. Now, Aria also not, not risking wanting. it for the biscuit. Yep. Some routine layups. It's early in the championship. Mm-hmm, exactly. You want to set yourself up for success in these last three rounds. Mm. Just a little bit up and over there for... Juliana, so she'll clean up a bogey here. Everybody else cleaning up their pars here on the ninth. So you're halfway through your first round of a four round championship. Everybody sort of settling in at this point. Is that sort of the feeling that you had as you? faced the course here on day one? A little bit, yeah. It's always nice to kind of get that first round out of the way to kind of establish pace a little bit. You know, you see, all right, if I'm under par, that's that's really nice moving forward and you know what you need to do, you know, during that second round. And if you are over par, then that, that gets you in that mindset to keep fighting forward. Always good when the whole card is at least at even par or better as we wrap up this opening nine. Make sure you're following the PDGA's social channels. Make sure that you subscribe here to the PDGA on YouTube for continuing coverage of the United States Women's Disc Golf Championships here in 2022 from Madison, Wisconsin.